This episode of Worst Episode Ever is brought to you by jock.com. That's J-O-Q.com. And this is the first time we've ever been brought to you by somebody. What does that mean, brought to you by? It, mean, means, right? uh, it means I that mean, someone spent... Still, I'm still uploading. You're still uploading it. I'm still... Well, I'm still emailing you the file. You're still uploading it. Right. So, jock.com did nothing to actually bring <laughs> the episode to you. But brought to you by is still the correct But they have paid us money, they, and yeah. uh, and we love it. It's a, it's a company that's run by a listener, and it is a UK web services company. And they do a lot of apps and web hosting and lots of awesome stuff that is probably way cooler than what you guys do for a living. Nerd! Hey, <laughs> hey buddy, did you catch a load of that jock.com? Pardon me? That's somewhat related. Yeah, yeah it's somewhat related. But anyway, it's jock.com <laughs> J-O-Q.com and check them out uh, if you give them the promo code which is we cruise. All you have to do is you email them to get a, uh, a statement, a, what do you, what do you call it? An estimate. estimate. An estimate. estimate. That's yeah. the one. To get an estimate uh, and you use the promo code WeCruise somewhere in your email to jock.com, they will hook you up with a free year of web hosting. Which a sounds, year? Sounds like an awesome deal. That's, do yeah. we get it on that? Uh, well, you haven't yet. <laughs> Maybe we'll email jock.com with the promo code WeCruise. Yeah, no, that makes sense because if we didn't have to pay for our internet, we probably would need advertisers. Yeah. We basically just want to do this show and just make a million dollars instead of we're paying millions and millions of dollars. But anyway, thanks to jock.com. That's J-O-Q dot com. Okay, here we are. Alt.nerd.obsessive. Worst episode ever. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Worst Episode Ever, a podcast for people who love The Simpsons by people who love The Simpsons about how much we hate The Simpsons. We're here trying to find which is the worst episode ever. And as always, my name is Dan. And as always, my name is Jack. And we're back uh, for our 60th episode, Jack. Wow. Happy I can't believe it. 60 victory. 60 victory. Uh, we're, we're doing it. Maybe we'll do another 60. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we'll do another one. Maybe we'll I do don't another know. one. Well, we have to do at least f- three more because, uh, as you guys may have heard, we are actually sponsored this episode. Yeah, we yeah. finally have a sponsor, uh, jock.com, J-O-Q.com. And if we sound any better, it is because the money that we got from Jacques to bring you this wonderful <laughs> podcast, we used it to buy a brand new recorder. So we have new recording equipment. We're redoing all yeah. of these studios. We have no idea how to use it. It t- took us 25 minutes to turn yes, it on. It's, but <laughs> It's very late now. Assumedly... That's not a word. No, it's it? not. I don't know. Uh, uh, assuredly is, it, is a word. Assuredly. Well, I'm not, assuredly isn't... I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's the I word I want. just assuming. Right. Assuming this podcast actually sounds better, right. uh, then it's because of jock.com. If it sounds worse, it's us. Yeah, Blame yeah, us, because yeah. we don't know what we're doing here. But uh, I don't know. If we, for whatever reason, we decide to call it quits uh, and stop doing it, even though we've got a few episodes contract we, we we're contracted to do some ads can't right. we just release the ads and not do the show we could in theory just release the maybe we'll just do 60 minutes of ads next week <laughs> so stay tuned for that guys but we're not doing it today because it's our 60th anniversary <laughs> we're gonna do it upright uh we are doing a very special episode it is from season 10 Season 10 from 1998. It is Homer Simpson in Kidney Trouble. It originally aired December 6th, 1998. Pretty close to when this episode's coming out. I had touched a boob at that point. (laughs) (laughs) I touched your boob, but I guess that doesn't count. That doesn't count. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, it does not. Uh, So, yeah, um, Jack, have you seen this one? I'm assuming uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's definitely been a long time since I've seen it. I've always hated it. It's I've always really yeah. I've always been like this episode is just going all over the place. It's stupid. I really hate it. I hate the the, the third act on the boat. Right. I hate everything about it. I have a feeling I'm going to like it now. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I feel like with after seeing 60 previous episodes and uh, being 10 years removed, I bet you I'm going to find stuff about it that I like. Right. Especially now since we're always like, well, they should experiment more, experiment more. And we'll get into this when we actually watch it. But sure. this is a kind of an experimental, uh, the third act at least. It is. And it's an episode that was written by John Swartzwelder, who I think is probably uh, my he's favorite. A hack. Oh, I, <laughs> no, I'm aside, just... aside from Conan, he's probably my favorite <laughs> Simpsons writer. Um, um, I like this episode in general, but I haven't watched it in a few years, and I haven't watched it as critically as I might uh, watch a later season yeah. episode. So in your serious, in uh, my serious, serious yes. podcasting hemis. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what you think, but hemis and I are your, very yes, different so, people. Yeah. Hemis is some sort of weird, <laughs> crazy prospector who lives in a bus stop. <laughs> I am Hemus's lack of denial. <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay, uh, so we're going to take a break. We're going to watch Homer Simpson and Kidney Trouble. If you guys haven't seen it, you can do so on SimpsonsWorld.com. Uh, if you're in the U.S., it's also out on DVD. I'm sure you can buy it on uh, you know all of your fancy streaming services, your iTunes and your Googles and whatnot. Uh, and if you want to get it on Amazon or if you want to get anything on Amazon, you should go 
to our website. That's wepodcast.com, W-E-E podcast.com. Click through our banners, our Amazon links, our Amazon banners, and then shop like you normally would. That really helps the show out. Uh, you guys, November was a huge, it was our biggest month because you guys have really stepped it up. A lot of you doing uh, Christmas shopping. We really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, next on our list, we're going to try to buy microphones to go with our new recorder. Yes, so. we'll get there. <laughs> One step at a time, and then we're gonna replay. We're just the studio. yelling at the recorder right now as loud as we can, and hoping it like it just embeds itself into the. I think it. I think it's working. I think it's working. <laughs> we're getting there. Yeah, uh, we're gonna redo the whole studio in platinum after we're done with this. So uh, we need you guys to keep keep clicking through and buying. Uh, okay, so we're gonna take a break. Oh yeah, and I was just gonna say. Um, I think this new recorder is working because you're probably hearing in the highest fidelity all of the shit coming out of through the Wii yes. Studios window. You're hearing the cars, the church the, bells. The church bells going uh, off right in, now. In pristine stereo sound. Crystal so, clear. Thank you, jock.com. <laughs> yes, thank you. How long do I have to live, Doc? <laughs> I'm amazed you're alive now. Oh, I blame myself for this. We all blame you. Come on, Doc. There's got to be something I can do to help my dad. Well, you could give him a kidney. A kidney? Okay, fine. So, that was Homer Simpson in Kidney Trouble. So much trouble, and uh, he was in it. Dan, can we, uh, can we talk about this episode? Uh, maybe like 80 minutes or so talking yeah, about this yeah, episode? Yeah. I would like to, I yeah. Wanna, I want to do something different. I oh, okay. Talk about The Simpsons. Oh, okay. On the podcast. Um, Should I stay outside, then? <laughs> Uh, all right, let's, I guess, do a plot recap before we get into anything else. So uh, they're going to an old west ghost town uh, as, as a fun vacation day. Um, Grandpa tags along accidentally, and uh, Grandpa drinks a lot of sarsaparilla uh, and really has to pee on the ride, the long ride home. Uh, Homer won't let him go pee. Uh, his kidneys explode, so now uh, Homer has to donate a kidney or Grandpa will die very soon. Uh, and uh, Homer decides to do it at first, but then gets very nervous. Uh, and then right before the surgery, he <laughs> runs away and uh, joins a ship, and is uh, a ship of lost souls, and is uh, cast away to sea. Uh, but they they reject him because he's a monster. He he let his he left his father to die. Uh, so then he finally builds up the, the strength to go back and get his, his uh, to donate his kidney. Uh, and then again at the last minute he chickens out and leaves. Uh, but Hans Moman runs him over more or less, and uh, and uh, the doctor Hipper takes the kidney out and, and all is well. All is well. Uh, very short, very simple plot. Yeah, it, it actually is when yeah. you when you say it so succinctly Ext- extended like that. Extended first act. There's no kind of situation where it's like, first they go to the mall, and then Bart becomes a rock star, and Lisa goes to the UN. And... No, I mean, I, I guess there's really no B-plot. The B-plot is we, we check in with Grandpa every once in a while. Right, that's true. There is no B-plot. This is a pretty straightforward episode. Um, but that first, that non-sequitur first act, the ghost town, it, it's pretty lengthy. Well, okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about it. The, first of all, I think the ghost town stuff is probably the strongest stuff in this episode overall. Mm-hmm. But you're right, it is a non sequitur in that it doesn't measure into the, the kidney plot, except it's a place to get Grandpa away from home, and they, they have the long car ride, and he, he can have a lot of drinks, and kind of be stuck in the car, and Homer won't let him go to the bathroom. And you're saying it's a non sequitur, this whole Blood Gulch stuff, but it's at least couched in character. Like, we the episode starts, the Simpsons are already on their way there. It's like a family kind of yeah. fun vacation day, like you said. Standard Simpsons, classic Simpsons opening. It is, yeah. and then it just so happens that the car breaks down in front of the retirement castle, and we realize it's Grandpa's. Not only is it Grandpa's birthday, but the Simpsons have forgot they don't want Grandpa to come, and he reluctantly, for Homer, joins them to come to Blood Gulch. So it's the fact that it was this. Not it's not just the Simpsons go to the Old West town. Right. It's the Simpsons kind of are forced to bring Grandpa. Like it's just that little tweak of a difference. Yeah. Makes it tie in more into the episode. That, I think. A little tweak is a good, good word for it because that and that moment where they pick up Grandpa and also actually right before that moment. So the episode opens right away with before they pick up Grandpa. They're just mentioning, oh, this old West Ham looks fun. They're reading the brochures. Right. Uh, there's like a, they're, they're excited about the 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 6 o'clock tumbleweeds. Oh, and, and there's and 40% more rootin' tootin', Jack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so like some of those jokes were, 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 were good. Um, but then Marge says, let's all give uh, three hip hip hoorays for, for your father for planning this trip or whatever. So yeah. it's interesting that the episode goes out of its way to 
introduce this idea of respect and Homer because it all comes down to how little respect they have for him when he uh, or he, everybody has for him when he runs right. out of his dad. Even the ship of lost souls lose respect for him and throw him overboard. Yep. So it's interesting, but like the grandpa thing, it's almost like a token reference. It's not really saying anything or setting up his character arc. Basically, Marge says, let's respect him. And nobody does. Uh, Bart and Lisa don't thank him. Even Homer's like, I'm trying to drive or something like that. He, even Homer's like not interested in her trying to get everybody to respect him. So it, it's hard to say if this is starting from a point where he doesn't have respect and that's why he wants to do the kidney thing to earn respect. Or he has the respect and he's fallen from grace, which is more closer to what what's happening. But it just seems like it's well, there. It's just not... We're attached. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but the kidney thing, I don't think that that's him like trying to get respect because he has no idea what he has agreed to when he says he'll right. give Grandpa no, a kidney. No, it's not, but that's why I'm saying that's why it's weird that this I respect it, element is there but not really being... I, I viewed it as, you know, it's just the Simpsons are having a typical day, everyone's pretty happy, and kind of the addition of Grandpa is what sets everything... Into it's it's a problem. Like right. Grandpa's the problem that Homer has. Like he doesn't respect well, his father. That's, I uh, guess that was my second point. So the first point is, I feel like the respect angle is mentioned. It's there, yeah. but it's there's really it's doesn't loose. it doesn't tie into anything at all. Uh, you know, I'm using the word arc here loosely because it really it's not part of the arc. Um, and no, the same but the, with we're Grandpa. seeing Homer in the status quo of you right. know everything's normal, and then it's Homer. Homer's fine, and then he's forced to spend the day with his dad, and then that's what causes all the problems. Right. Uh, it's status quo is a good way of putting it because that my point is the reason I brought this up is the second point is where Grandpa comes into play, uh, and that's again status quo. They don't really give a shit about Grandpa. They don't want him to tag along. He's more of a nuisance than anything. It's it's kind of just nice to forget about him and leave him at this just living home. Right. Um, which but, is which is a fairly satirical yeah. thing because a lot of people. Do do that. I they guess what you I guess if you're you, you're saying this car ride is setting up the status quo, that makes more sense because if it's specifically setting up again arcs story in this story, it really doesn't do much. Yes, Grandpa's a nuisance and they don't want him around, but again, that's there. It's they bring it up, they mention it, but it doesn't really play into whether Homer wants to give him the kidney or their reactions when Grandpa's dying. All those later scenes are, yes, we're sad Grandpa's dying, but there's nothing, nothing. there's no regret or no who cares. This, it has nothing to do with the fact that in the first act, they didn't really want, or, or status quo, they never really want Grandpa around. That doesn't really play into their reactions into, oh my God, he's going to die. It's not like, oh, we, we should have appreciated you more, or maybe the other way you go, oh, we, you know, we don't care, finally. And then the right. same, same with Homer's, Grandpa being a nuisance to Homer, that's not why he's running away. That plays that doesn't play at all into Homer's story. Homer's afraid of being an organ donor and losing his kidney. He yeah. has, he, he has regret for because he loves his dad and he, and he really feels bad. But the idea of Grandpa being a nuisance has really nothing well, to do not, with his uh, what, the so dynamic that, that's going on. It's not so much here. that Grandpa's a nuisance. I think it is just that Homer Homer like loves his father. I guess. Because like he's he you know yeah. he puts him in a nursing home and doesn't invite him on family fun days. He has a sweet flashback where he remembers right, why he, he loves his dad. When it comes to giving him a kidney, you know he he says like oh sure because he doesn't really understand what's involved. But once he does, that's when he has second thoughts and he says oh I love my dad I guess, but also I don't want to make my own life so much worse. And he actually never comes around on that issue because they just ultimately steal his kidney. Yeah. So I think it's more of the relationship Homer had like. What is a, a 38-year-old man, what kind of relationship does he have is with his elderly father? But I don't say that like, that's not in the episode at all. I, I think you could read it into the episode. I don't think it's drawn attention to very much. It, it really just seems to be he doesn't want to lose his kidney. He, does, he doesn't want to go through a dangerous operation and also live his life at a, at a, with a handicap. Uh, I agree with you. I yeah. agree with you. But I think that's weighed against, like, you know, how much do you love your elderly father? Like Marge even says at one point, like, oh, it's so nice of you to severely handicap and yes. shorten your life to barely extend yeah. an old man's but life. But that's at the very end of the episode as a joke, right. uh, a funny joke. But that should have been brought up earlier saying, is it really worth giving up your kitty? Yes, you love your dad, but he's only got five good years left and not even good years. Well, I think that's the central question of the but they, episode. But that's not the question, though. They never ask it. it that's that's they need that's to implying, ask it for it to be the question. That's implying a heavy dose of head cannon. It's not I there. I don't think it's, so. It's, it's, it's between between the lines. But that's what... It's not even subtext. It's sub-subtext. 
I don't think that that's true. Like, I think it's. I'm all for subtle storytelling, but it's a Simpsons episode. I want I want subtext, but I don't want sub subtext. I don't want to do all the work. What about sub sub subtext? That's okay. Okay, good. <laughs> But no, I really I, feel like it's not there. I get what you're saying. I mean, I'm I, I'm not saying I'm not saying you can't read into it the way you are. But that's the, to me that's that's headcanon. That's like trying to come up with a justifying Princess Leia's headbutt hair. It's not between the lines. You can come up with something that fits fits the story, the the Star Wars mythology, but it's not there. You're not, you know, that's a hundred percent headcanon. A good subtext. I don't, would, I don't think it's headcanon in the same way that you're saying it is. I think it is. It can be read into this text. If we're getting all uh, metatextual, I on just it. I don't know. I feel like there's no character beats in this episode. Homer, besides Homer, is Homer is driven by his fear of the surgery and of of not having a kidney. Yeah, uh, he's brought back by his regret and his love for his father. But right. uh, but well, the question of leaving is not. It was really just. Strictly... I would actually argue that that's not what brings him back. What brings him back is being a pariah and everyone else hating him, which is him. even more selfish. Kind of, and, it yeah. is. I agree. I mean, I don't think the the father son yeah. dynamic between Grandpa and Homer is resolved. In fact, it ends with Grandpa dancing away, yeah. having stolen Homer's that's kidney. What I'm, I guess that to sum up what my problem is here uh, is. The, what you just said, the father-son di- dynamic wasn't there. I don't think the father-son dynamic is in the episode at all. There's a there's a flashback. There's a couple sweet moments where they hold hands. But in terms I, of I don't driving agree. the story forward, in, in terms of uh, uh, why is Homer running away, why is he coming back, Grandpa is almost a non-factor. It, it couldn't it do, you know could have been a complete stranger he's given his kidney to. I agree in the sense that Homer doesn't know what he's doing, and it's just. He's going to give someone his kidney, doesn't realize what that means, finds out what he means, and that fear of what his life is going to be like after he's down one kidney is what sends yeah. him to the show. You really could have toyed that. You could have replaced Grandpa with any character. You could have replaced Grandpa with Mo or something. Ex- that's a bad yeah. story. That's a bad story then. It should be... That's not a bad story. It's just a different story than a father-son story. I mean, any a good a good writing, a good story would be this is really... These scenes are the result, the result and the only result of what would happen if you put these two characters in this situation. Not... It becomes more plot than character based if you can kind of just use variables and say, you know, let's throw Mo in this one. It's like when they pick three yeah, random I Springfielders mean, for a, a random uh, crowd B plot or something. Right. And I it doesn't matter which ones. I don't think it's quite as bad as you're making it out to be. I think there is some grandpa specific stuff. Maybe it's just the, from when we see like the B plot ish stuff of grandpa. Like let's say it was Mo that Homer was giving his yeah. kidney to. Uh, Homer might still feel bad. And, but people aren't going to look at him as badly. Right, that's point. That's a good point. It's your father. Yeah. Right. All and right. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, I guess that's my only point. So no, that that it, you know, I, I'm definitely exaggerating my points because I, I'm trying. I'm just trying to wrap my head around what's exactly what's wrong missing. with this what's episode? missing for me. There's, I feel. I feel like again. I want to go back to those very those two first points. Uh, they set up something about respect with Homer. Marge is like, let's get hip really, hooray. I don't really buy that they set up something about respect with Homer. The hip I don't think they did either. I don't think they did. Was just a gag. I don't think they did either. But it's it's interesting that it's just there. And then and then also with Grandpa, the Grandpa well, being a nuisance. That if gra- anything, it's showing that Homer is someone who takes care of his family. I mean, I think this is a bit of an extended reading, but right. to say that Homer is like, you know, Homer planned this trip and Homer's driving him to Bloodbath Gulch and he's doing it with a smile and he even enjoys himself. He's wanted for Lou behavior we'll talk about that later uh but you know homer has kind of made everyone happy and then he's he's the, also the one who makes grand, grandpa's kidneys explode well i want to talk about that too. yeah no we'll definitely yeah. get there but i think there is something there i agree it's not like the strongest but yeah i don't know i mean there is an a to b to c to d plot in this episode yeah story-wise uh, but just uh i don't know i don't think it's being informed by character dynamics at all between him and his father or very, I or very little, very little. Sub subtext. Sub sub. I mean, if it was sub sub subtext, I would then be, fi- fine, I'd with be it. fine. We'd be okay with it. it. I'd, I'd right. be cheers to that. I I mean, you've I don't know if you've written anything, read anything I've written recently. Uh-huh. The problem I have is definitely I do sub 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 subtext where I'm like it's there and people are like this is boring. I don't know what this is. <laughs> so, like that, so I'm I'm fine with three or more subs. I read, two. I read two Pete subs. I read the people. Pete, Pete, story. The people. That was sub. That was sub sub subtext. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't just representing people. All right. He was also pulling. It was a mankind. <laughs> and he was pulling. All the Pete's. Pete's. <laughs> Just That's the sub-sub-subtext. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I get it. It's um, between, between the lines. Between the lines. Okay. I think we've spent enough time on the kind of overall yeah. 
stuff going on. Just a couple of quick things. We talked about the uh, the car ride stuff, but just some things which just quickly to mention. Uh, Homer is driving and Lisa notices that the check engine light has come on. And I love that Homer's solution is, oh, the piece of tape must have fallen off. And he just has a piece of tape that, that covers the engine. That is like, to me, a quintessential John Schwartzwelder line. It's yeah, so, and I, I, very it's classic. Very like, working class you know, that's exactly what the, the, the world I grew up in. And yeah. Yeah. No, it's, and that's I like, it. I, I, Homer, that's a classic Homer action yeah, too. Yeah. Like, Oh, whoops. The, yeah. the problem. He's not ignoring the problem. He has a solution. Right. But it's his own like convoluted, right. like real easy solution that doesn't actually solve the problem. But what was the sub subtext behind picking up the sticker? I think the, I it... think the tape represents uh, his regrets at being a bad son. I'm not sure the tape was informed by Homer as a driver. She Check engine meant check your relationship with your father. Yeah, because if you can, you give heart, that kidney. The heart is the engine. Well, the broken of down the car soul. is Grandpa's broken down body, and Homer <laughs> has caused the car to break down much in the same he's way just, he caused Grandpa's body. He thinks body. he could just put a piece of tape on it, and it'll all be better. That's it. But some, he's wrong. At, at some point, you have to check that engine, yeah, bro. At some point, check that engine. Check that engine, bro. I love you, Dad. <laughs> I love you too. Wait, are you my Jack? dad? <laughs> Jackie boy, I'm so happy to hear you say these good words about me. Oh. All right, I'm going to see myself out. Thank you. Come see me on a week, cruise. Um, also, I really like in that opening driving scene, uh, when they break down at the retirement castle, there is a uh, Night of the Living Dead kind of parody yeah. thing of Grandpa walking towards like a zombie. They get to the window. I love yeah. Jasper is with him. Yeah, and he taps on the... He taps on the glass and Lisa like goes, ah! And he also goes, ah! <laughs> just... And then he just slowly <laughs> walks away, which was was a weird animation. The, the yeah. noise was very great. Um, there, there's another line in that scene I really liked. Uh, what was it? Where uh, Homer says... Uh, is, is this about... Uh, why is the gold town so far away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, oh, it's because they're stupid. That's why. That's, yeah, that's why, why everybody, everybody does, does everything. everything. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's another great, like, classic yeah. Homer line. And it was, also, it was also not just the that's why everybody does everything. That was icing on the cake. But the first part of the joke is Lisa giving him the right answer. The, you know, the yeah, town right. was the, there because they that's where gold. they found the gold. Yeah, right. And he's just like, it's there because it's stupid. That's a perfect response you give yeah. when you ask a question out of anger and somebody gives you a reasonable response. <laughs> right. and, and you're not happy with no, that. No, it's <laughs> stupid. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so they get to Bloodbath Gulch, which is this ghost town. Blood Gulch, but not Bloodbath Gulch. Blood Gulch is the name of the level from Halo, right? The one uh, we used to play. I think so, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. That was the one level we'd play. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's true of everyone who played Halo. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Blood. Yeah, it was Blood, Blood Gulch. That's interesting. Yeah. I so this is Bloodbath yeah, Gulch. That's... This was this came just first. A, it's just so. interesting comparison. Interesting to note. notes, like Lost. We're just <laughs> tying up the connections. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're like Lost, where you just do token references that really have nothing to do with anything. <laughs> there's no payoff. Yeah, that's... It was all a magic. Sub, sub, subtext. That's right. Uh, <laughs> hope Damon Lindelof is listening. Actually, this is a... I'm just trying to point... This will be in the deleted scenes, but... You and I were big fans of the official Lost podcast. Right. Maybe maybe this shouldn't be a deleted scene because this is some this is a, this you're is, about to drop a pretty big yeah. uh, we lore bomb right this here. This was the first podcast I ever listened to, the official Lost podcast, yeah, because same. I was such a big Lost yeah. fan, and so were you. And you and I both loved it, and it was the fucking weirdest podcast. So it was the two writers of the Damon show who are Carl not Cuse. broadcasters; they're not no, they're not actors. No, they're, they're they're just geeky writers. They were the showrunners for Lost, and they would just every week just talk, like just talk. And right. they it was tell- originally supposed to be, I'm guessing, like a fan Q and A. Like they would answer emails, try to like explain some, some right. stuff. But it quickly just turned into something. It, tu- it turned into just them, like I guess, just taking an hour out of their very busy day to just talk and bullshit and just make up these crazy bits. And it was yeah. just like, and the crazy was- bits would like basically come out of just them saying something the wrong way, or right. Yeah, they would just like say one thing, and then it would be funny, and they would just turn it into an ongoing yeah. joke. And a lot of podcasts have just kind of devol- involved into that. I think independently, right. a lot of people will just pick up that style because when you're just two people talking to each other, that's kind of what happened. Yeah, um, you're just making like inside jokes. So there's plenty of podcasts and podcasters who never listen to that who probably have very similar dynamics right. but I'd like to think that that kind of just burned its way into our brain yes I would say that this entire show is us doing our own version it's, of the official yeah, Lost podcast I would say the official Lost podcast this, uh, this is some juicy uh, info for you we fans out there yeah I would say the official Lost podcast is like the godfather it's, of worst episode it's ever it's the er we yeah, yeah. <laughs> we before we yeah. and they also wanted to do a podcast about the ABC show Daybreak yes. which lasted for like six episodes <laughs> Yes. And not only was that show, what, nine years ago now at this point? Yes, yeah, geez. Eight years, oh, man. I would still do a podcast about Daybreak. So <laughs> it, the, the connections are, are both are yes. both subtext and sub-subtext. Don't, so. make, don't make me play that banjo, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I wonder. That's got to still be on iTunes somewhere. I, I should go back and. I don't. I don't know if it is, but uh, I think fans um, of the show have made yeah. it available somewhere yeah, online. No, so, so it's uh, thank you to uh, Damon and uh, Damon and Carlton Carlton for for that. Watch the leftovers. Watch Carlton uh, Cuse's new show. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to the Simpsons is what we're here. I think to talk about. Uh, Bloodbath Gulch, that's where we were. Yes. So I love the scene with the, uh, the tour guide yeah. talking about all the prostitutes. Yeah, Mar- Marge goes, uh, guys, we're actually going to learn something. This is, yeah. it's great that this is a field trip where we're, you know, it's smart and educational. Yep. And then he immediately just talks about prostitutes. And- <laughs> like prostitution was the backbone of this town. <laughs> there's the brothel, the whorehouse, the cat house. They're going to go see them all. And they're going to go to the mission and there's lots of prostitutes in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of that I just think is really, really funny. Marge's reaction to it is also great. Um, I, li- I, li- I love and it. It's also this. I would say is more subtext. It's not sub subtext. Okay. But it's subtext uh, in that it's just a general parody of when you go to these types of uh, um, tourist spots. I guess would be the term. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we grew up next to one on Staten Island. It's called Richmond Town. Scenic uh, Richmond Town. Scenic Richmond Town, and it's uh, it's a small village that existed during the colonial times. I think right. Washington stayed there during the war. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they've tried to keep it as in good condition as possible. They try to make it look as, as period as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of, maybe one or two of the houses are still from that period. So um, you go there, and yes, the tour guide gives you some trivia. Uh, you might try their sugar plums, so, some, you know, something, some token kind you, of you period. You make a candle. Yeah, exactly. But to be honest, while it's cool that those things exist, there's really not much big his, you know George Washington spent one night there it's not right you know it's not his birthplace it's not like he spent one night yeah. so like he says here he's like you know the this sidewalk may or may not have been stepped on by, <laughs> by bandits, bandits. And who knows what adventures was with that troth or whatever yeah. and like i like i just thought that was a, a like a general parody of these types of where they still they have their place like they i'm not saying burn them down and put a parking lot right. it's nice that we have these old period pieces as, as like a museum piece but, but they, they build them up have to, to be more you than have what they to, are yeah and you, if you're going to get draw people there you really right like again stat, another Staten Island uh, example is um, everybody rides the Staten Island ferry a lot of New York tourists yes because uh, it's an amazing view of the harbor and it's totally free and then once you get to Staten Island there's nothing to do so you just turn around and go back and for years for decades Staten Island's government has been trying to like make money because we don't they don't make any money off of right, the, tens of thousands of tourists coming every free. day yeah. yeah so they've been just decades they've been trying now now they're like building a huge mall complex they're building the world's largest We're, ferris wheel yeah, that'll take be there that, soon london <laughs> london eye yeah, we got you, a you, fucking you, staten island butthole <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the name of it the yeah, staten island butthole that's it. it's just a giant sphincter <laughs> that you can ride and get scenic views of new jersey staten yep. island new york and bay ridge we might even and be you, able to see it from not my window i'm facing the wrong direction that's but true. uh my from uh from my well, your no, roof your roof would be able to see it mine yeah and probably from our, our roof, but I don't know how to get up there. Up, I assume. But well, no, you have to go down to go up. Actually, <laughs> um, everything's no, backwards at we studio. But yeah, it's just. The, but it's the same same problem Staten Island's having is it's. Yeah, you have a good reason to get people here. You don't have a great reason for them to stay. Right. So I'm. I think I don't think I'm. I don't think this is sub subtext. I think Schwarzwalder was also commenting on that with the, with those lines like there may or may not have been bandits. Yeah. Uh, so I like that stuff in addition to the the, the prostitute jokes. Agreed. Which were a little bit more. Text. <laughs> yes, yeah, I agree. Um, what did you think of the uh, the robot kick line? The robots, they, they break. Uh, the, the, the leg kicking off was a very funny animation. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, was, well, I was surprised they actually showed their rear butts. I thought that was a little racy. Did you think uh, Grandpa pinching, like a, one of the butts comes off and yeah, lands on yeah. the bar next to Grandpa, and he pinches it, and then a hand comes off and flies and hits him in the face and slaps yeah, him? Yeah. I thought that was cute. I liked it. Yeah, all right. So yeah. I, th- I thought all of the gags in this section really worked really well. Uh, um, some of them made me laugh very loud. Well, I think the best was Bart comes up to Marge. Yes, hey, Mom, look yes. what I got. And it's a poster. It says, Wanted for Lewd Behavior. And it's a picture of Homer. And she's like, oh, that's so cute. Did you get that made up at the souvenir shop? And she goes, no, that, that security guard's handing <laughs> yeah, them it's out. it's a real wanted poster. Yeah. And that Homer, what kind of lewd behavior I, of Homer? I love was, that it was lewd like, behavior. Like, was he showing strangers his penis? I, have, like, <laughs> I would like to think so. Um, I laughed for a good minute at that joke because there's just so many elements to it that worked. The, the, yeah. the picture, Bart's delivery. Yeah, yeah, yep. it was, but in general, I actually thought this episode was less funny than I was expecting. Really? I was expecting, because it's a season 10, I was expecting it to be funnier than the usual episodes we cover on the show. You know, not season 7 funny, but funnier, funnier, and it was. It, it was yeah. funnier than the shows we usually cover. But I, I was expect like, 
we did Principal Mbarper, which was season nine. And, That's probably uh, a funnier episode. that was episode. a much funnier episode. I agree with you. I, in general, the jokes I liked in this episode, I liked, but I didn't love. And they were fewer and far between than I expected. I actually was underwhelmed with the humor in this episode. I'll give you that. Um, one other thing about the, uh, the Old West Town, uh, the, the, uh, the drunk... The town drunk yes. who comes up, and he, he was fired from his job, and now he just comes by, and he actually is drunk. I, I love, just because of how horrible it was, when he grabs Homer's shirt, and he goes, please help me, I'm sick, yeah. and Homer just laughs at him. Uh, the delivery was great of the I'm sick, and it was just, yeah. I think what made it work was just how real it was. Like, yeah. It was just it was like, I'm sick. That's You could have had him say anything, and I'm sick. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Homer's Homer's laughing. It was a little hard to swallow, but I, but, it, it was but it funny. worked. Yeah. It worked in the I mean, moment. He is showing penis, strangers his penis. That's so. true. And then the drunk falls over and he falls into the uh, the horse trough, yeah. uh, filled with water, and he basically drowns. Yeah, yeah. There's some bubbles there for a second, then it stops. Right, and uh, everyone's like, "Oh, I'm sure he'll be okay." And then the bubbles stop, and it's just a beat there. And then one of the tourists just takes a picture, and then yeah, it cuts it's out such from an that. Ex- it's a really extended slow pace gag because yeah he falls yeah there's bubbles there's bubbles it stops then lisa says should we help him then there's like a half beat then bart says ah uh, he knows what he's doing control, yeah. yeah yeah then there's like a nice full beat and then, and then you, you're waiting click. for the you're waiting for the scene to end and then the camera click was it was yeah it was perfect I, not so i love slow extended you know, I'm a big Coen Brothers fan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. me too. No, so I like slow uh, extended gags, and I feel like that's something we just don't see uh, very often well, in we the post Well, we see them. They're just not funny. That's our extra beat along. Do they really go that long? I feel like the show's so much more rushed than it used yeah, to be. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, a recent one, like uh, Homer with the, the pictures that he bought after Bart made all that money, and it was yeah. him dropping the baby, and then it comes back up. That was a very long extended joke. I guess joke. the difference... It just didn't work. I guess I'm talking about how where you have a frame where nothing is happening because once those bubbles stop he's just sitting okay, there and la- we're watching last him week drown. when burns and smithers smithers is on fire and he's rolling around and mr burns is just looking at the camera we're basically just seeing smithers rolling in the background yeah, everything but, else is static no that's true so there are those types of rake gag type jokes where it's, we just don't it's like going them. on but i'm saying i don't think there's quiet like um, what's that art like term? I'm not. I don't know anything about art, but the use of like neg- negative space. Yeah. Like yeah. Like the idea of showing nothing can be very funny. I'm trying to think of classic, classic Simpsons episodes that do it, and I know there are some, and I can't think of any off the top of my head. But where the joke is that you're looking at nothing happen. Not nothing happening. I, this yeah. isn't the best example, but the only one that's coming to me right now is Homer going, "I'll show you an atom it," and he just right. freezes, and that doesn't freeze for very long. But the you know, it's not it's not something funny happening in the background or in the foreground for an extended time. It's nothing happening. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of other examples. Well, but but, I, but I, the I, nothing happening here is this pathetic he's, he's drunk drowning. is, is, is yeah, dying yeah. and no one's doing anything. Yeah, no, I loved it. I, I just I'm saying the use of negative space. I guess the use of nothing right. happening which I feel like was much more prominent in the classic era, and I can't think of any goddamn examples. Uh, I feel like that is something we just don't see anymore in anything. I feel like we're, we don't have the attention span. They're, they're too afraid to have nothing happen for too long. I guess you could be on something They there. certainly do have jokes go on for way too long. I, I won't argue yes, that. Yes, definitely. But I don't know if they do. If they have nothing go on for too long. Right. So it's time to leave the uh, Bloodbath Gulch, and they get in the car, and Grandpa has to pee, but Homer won't let him because he has to get home yeah, to watch yeah, Inside yeah. the Actor Studio with F. Murray Abraham. <laughs> what do you think of that? Because right, so this is my big question. Okay. Is this jerk-ass Homer? I mean, he's. N- what is the reasoning for him to... to st- like, Grandpa is clearly suffering. He's clearly in a lot of pain. And right. God, do I have sympathy for him. Uh, I go to a lot of friends' places uptown in Washington Heights or in Queens. Right. Where it's like an hour and a half, two-hour subway ride of the internet. Pee. And, you know, I've presumably had 12 or 13 beers. <laughs> and it's a long subway ride. And when you just have to go and you know you can't go, it well, is just pain. I've gotten off... Multiple occasions where I just had to get off somewhere in Midtown, like just get off at a random stop and then start trolling bars and seeing if I could sneak into a bathroom and then get yeah. back on the subway. I'm adding 45 minutes hour to my community. You are, but yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. I can't hold it in anymore. You gotta go. When so, you gotta go, you gotta go. Nothing but sympathy. I'm sure Homer's been in the same situation. How do you like you? Cl- Grandpa's clearly suffering. How do you not stop? Like the inside of the actor's studio to me is a funny joke, but it's not a strong enough motivation to say we're not stopping once. Well. That's sort of why I think it works, at least for me. It's F. Murray Abraham. Who, why would Homer care about Inside the Actor Studio with F. Murray Abraham? Maybe but, he knew one day that he would be a guest star on Homeland and would be awesome. Yeah. 
May, I, I mean, I think it's just, it's funny in the sense that it's this very random thing that we wouldn't think Homer cares about. And he yeah, cares yeah, about yeah. it so he really much yeah. that he won't stop the car for five it's seconds. It's a funny joke. I don't, it just doesn't justify him not stopping. Now, me. whether or not it's jerk-ass Homer is an interesting question. I think... Well, I'm using the term jerk-ass in, is he doing something in a mean-spirited way where he's not doing it out of negligence or out of stupidity. He's doing it just to be a jerk. He's doing it selfishly, I think. Yeah. He doesn't care. Like, you know, Grandpa wasn't even supposed to be there. They don't really care about Grandpa. He's just going to yeah. let him suffer because Homer needs what Homer needs. I think in that sense, you know, it, it treads the line of jerk-ass Homer. I think it treads the line. I'm not sure I'm convinced it is. but Me neither. I just, I don't, I just, I just really I, like him going F Murray Abraham. It's a very funny line. I yeah. just, I just feel like they I needed agree. more for him to not like not stop once. Right. I, you know, if he was quite, if he was keeping it to himself, that's one thing, but he was clearly like, I'm in pain. Right. And like, they passed by like the it's, world's largest it's toilet. It's hard for me to reconcile. It's hard for me to not think less of Homer to think, you know, it's not, not hard for me to not hate Homer. I hate jerk ass Homer. I hate when Homer does things, you know, I love when he does things out of stupidity, even though right. they're, they're bad to other people, it makes me laugh. But when he's being a jerk, when he's being mean spirited, I hate him. And it's hard for me to not hate a guy who is okay with his fa- old man father suffering in the back in pain, having to pee. So here's, here's something I, I wanted to bring up. And I think it ties into what you were just saying. You did this to your dad last I week. I did this to my dad. He can rot. <laughs> I don't care about his kidneys. <laughs> they have Grandpa's kidneys pop. Yeah. They explode. They explode. It's very cartoony that yeah. he, it, they pop. It's not yeah. like he has renal failure. His kidneys like go into yeah. disrepair. Yeah, I can't really play that. In the, exactly. Yeah. That's my point. Like They intentionally make it this cartoony problem. Like Grandpa's dying. It's still they, very they, the serious. Morta- yeah, the mortality aspect seems to be very, played pretty straight. It, right. It's, they're sad. Even Hibbert has a sad laugh. Right. But it, it's, it's always we're sad because of this cartoony thing where your kidneys exploded inside of you. Yeah. Something that can't possibly happen. Yeah. I mean, you could actually have kidneys. Kidney, kidney damage and something yeah. bad happened, but I think it's um, Homer's kind of jerkness is a mitigated a little bit by that, where it's not. I guess I mean like, you're right. It's the result very, is this over the top cartoony thing. It's the results. Well, I'm, I'm saying just very very yeah. little. Yeah, like this is still a comedy show. It's not going to yeah. really look be like the, oh the, Grandpa's the, got kidney yeah, failure. No, the bursting kidneys works for me. Um, it works okay and it, for it me. works that they really treat they treat it as if it was renal failure failure it's it's really just a shortcut for renal failure because right. You know, oh, Grandpa gets renal failure. Doesn't it's, really it's a, play well little, in the TV that's, guide. Yeah. That's a little too real. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the emotions... Exploded that, kidneys yeah. is not. The emotions are real, though. They all... No, the emotions are. They, the I music, know. everything, they play it very sad, and like Grandpa is going to die. I love when Hibbert says, your eating days are over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, they... Uh, and I'm glad they do, because, uh, you know, Grandpa's mortality is key to whatever story is going on here. Um, no, the, the cartoony aspect doesn't really... Uh, I don't know. It makes sense to me. Oh, no, it, make, it makes uh, sense. Oh, in terms they, of mitigating, they have to do yeah. it because in terms you know. of mitigate. See, that it's, to me, I guess it doesn't mitigate Homer's quote unquote jerk ass behavior because just a little because the emotions that come after are still played real. So it's yeah. still like, yeah, you still killed your father by not pulling over for five minutes. Right, but it's still in a more comedic like you yeah. killed your father. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? Yeah, so that change fine. your mind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do that if I ever get arrested for murder. Just go, I killed your husband. (laughs) Why'd you kill my husband? (laughs) I was just sick of him taking away my dad time. Damn it. Ethan. (laughs) I'm sorry, Jangle, that you have to find out this way. Why did Ethan pop in your head? I was thinking Mission Impossible. I don't know why. (laughs) Okay. I was thinking Ethan Rom from uh, from Lost. That's that's Tom Cruise's cousin. Check our deleted scenes, folks. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And this is also in the deleted scenes, probably. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. It's some subtext. I I might just be referencing things that aren't here at all. They're in another episode to be released later in the week. So I wanted to point this out. Um, Homer finds out that Grandpa's kidneys popped, and he's like... Hibbert says, oh, that probably explains the popping noise you heard. And Homer seems more concerned about his muffler or the, yeah, about his yeah, car than yeah. about Grandpa. And then there's an axe break. And when they come back, Homer's actually then, – then he's concerned and he immediately wants to help. Like, huh. how can I help him? I didn't even think about that. I just I saw it. it I just saw the muffler line as yes, it's easy joke to make with sound effects. Yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't love the muffler but thing. But you're right. That, that totally makes sense that uh, – the subtext is that Homer cares more about his car than Grandpa. Yeah, that's a right. very interesting. Yes, yeah, so, and then the next. But the, then I like we come back from the commercial and, break, yeah. and then Homer's so like, "Well, how can they, I help?" Right. They wanted to end it on a joke. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right. But then when they come back, they have to set the right. stakes for Act Two, and it makes yeah, it's a little 
It's a little false. It rings a little false. I mean, the muffler thing, I didn't love it. No. Yeah. It's a lot It's a lot like the joke of when Homer had the heart palpitations. I think it's your heart, and it's on the last pump. Oh, he goes to the mechanic to see yeah, yeah. what it is, and then he finds out it's his heart. It's kind yeah. of the same joke. Yeah, I mean, it could have been muffler. It could have been anything. They just wanted to make a joke like, oh, that's what that popping sound was. Right. Yeah, um, Yeah. I guess it rings a little false that they have to then reorient the character at the beginning of the second act. So it makes it seem like the joke is not worth it. Right. I'll do it. But if I die during the operation, will you do one thing for me? Oh, anything, sweetheart. Blow up the hospital. So Homer agrees to give a kidney to Grandpa, and I like that then everyone is so nice to him. Uh, yeah. Marge cooks him all this meat, and Lisa's fluffing his pillow. Bart gets him all his favorite gorilla movies from the <laughs> video store, including Apes of Pop in the airline version, which I love that, that line. I love, and I that love that reference. he would rather watch the airline version. Yeah, the airline that ever better? version. <laughs> <laughs> oh god I, speaking of Homer being everyone being nice to him I love the line I'm the luckiest man in the world now that Lou Gehrig is dead that's a great line great perfect line. great yeah. line uh, and, very and classic Homer's delivery asked. perfect yep and then we see you have anything else about that scene nope I don't think so so then Homer's at Moe's and that's when he finds out what he's really agreed to yeah. Lenny and Carl and Moe kind of tell him like you won't be able to drink as much you're gonna get put on an organ donor list yeah second organ donor joke in a, in a yeah, row we, uh, little, it's weird how those, those synchronicities happen little big girl had one last week yeah. yeah did you say little ghost girl no nope, didn't hello didn't, I'm nope, here didn't say it shopshop.com everybody I believe they have good ghost rates I don't know what that means <laughs> Ghost rates. <laughs> I have to go now. <laughs> okay, good. I thought you were on a spaceship above Wii Studios. We, we returned. <laughs> don't you remember? <laughs> I will go re- re-return. All right. <laughs> re-return. <laughs> um... So I thought I thought it was interesting that that scene in Moe's actually kind of sets up the ending of the episode, a lo- loosely, because they say, like, oh, everyone's going to want an eye or a spleen or whatever, and then what happens is Homer gets into a car accident, and they take his organ. <laughs> like, they take That's his kidney. That's a stretch. I mean, he already signed up for the kidney. If they had taken That's a bunch true. of... That's true. If they were like, oh, we also helped yourself to a uh, gallbladder. But it's, it, well, it's interesting that the fear that they put into Homer is that his organs are going to be taken yeah. without his consent, and yeah. now, and that's kind of what happens. That did seem to be a fear, too at the time in the culture. I don't know if it still is where people didn't want to sign up for being an organ donor. You think that the, the paramedics won't yeah, work as hard which, to save you, which is ridiculous. Yeah, it's kind of like I can't well, imagine. I, the paramedics don't care <laughs> about your eyes going to some person but, who needs eyes. Uh, Jerry Orbach's eyes need to get to this. <laughs> That's too insight. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's really, it's, it's very cynical. Um, yeah. I feel like that's dissipated. I don't know. That, that I don't, sense. I, I hope so. I mean, I'm not an organ donor, though. Um, I remember I got a fake ID when I was in college before I turned 21, and they yeah. made me an organ donor, and they didn't ask, and I was like, the fuck? What are you, I'm gonna <laughs> organ like, donor? I'm going to get drunk before I'm 21. Yeah. I'm going to get hit by a car because I don't know what I'm doing, yeah. and then they're going to take my organs because they think uh, John Hamich from uh, Boston, <laughs> Massachusetts, age 27. <laughs> was that your name? No, your it was idea? Jack McCall. Oh, but right. I, I did say it was from Boston. Uh, so <laughs> it would just be, I don't know. I was always like freaked out that they gave me an organ donor. Uh, I yeah. also I also tipped the guy a lot of money and I felt like such an asshole. I was like, do you tip for illegal activities? No, like, you, you don't need to tip. I mean, like just because they're doing something illegal, shouldn't you still tip? Like I remember it cost, the, the thing cost like 120, 130 bucks and I gave him 200 Wow, just, that's a hell of a tip. I didn't know what I didn't know what the tipping was. I, <laughs> in retrospect, I was so, like, do you tip 50, 60 percent? You tip like yeah, sixty percent. Yeah. Well, tipping like 15, 18 percent didn't seem right because it was illegal. I thought like you know. I don't think you need to tip I, anything. I thought you always like give them a little extra. Go yeah 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 yeah. Good good job on the uh, on the. the I gotta say, I don't do enough illegal activity to know know. for sure, but it seems like you overtipped. When you buy drugs, I don't buy drugs. When you buy buy drugs, when you buy drugs, don't shouldn't you tip the guy? Especially if it's like you know, I I believe you call him and you meet them at like a spot where there's no street light or whatever. Like he's coming out of his way, or (laughs) so you learn this from movies too. (laughs) So don't you uh, don't you gotta give him a little tip? I mean, you tip the pizza guy for coming a few blocks down. The pizza guy. Has uh, a reputable business that the prices are set not by him. A so drug you're dealer saying because is setting his own prices. So you're saying because they're overcharging. He makes most his likely, own hours. Oh, absolutely. It's okay not to tip. I, I wouldn't know from experience. Do you tip hookers? Oh well, yeah, all the time. Yeah, I mean, so they say three hundred dollars for an hour. I usually tip my prostitutes uh, like two hundred to three hundred dollars. I'm a big spender. 
Oh no, is my wife going to listen to this? I'm right. sorry. Assuming you're joking because your wife might be listening to this. No, but in general, if you... I am joking because more than just my wife might be listening. Yeah, this. Ethan might be listening. Ethan, oh no, <laughs> Ethan, I thought he was dead. Um, no, I mean, if you're using a, if you're, if you're using a hooker, say she says 50 bucks for a blowjob, do you not give her like $55? Like, I have never been to a hooker and I no, have no I'm idea saying, what, what you the think? protocol is. Yeah, I, mean, I would imagine no. You don't tip the hooker. I wouldn't tip the hooker. I feel like she'd be. I feel like she'd be offended. I'm sorry. She'd be like, what if? What if she gave a real? What is she, she gonna a, do? Unblow me? <laughs> what if she gave a really good blowjob? What if she was like better than the usual hooker blowjob? You don't go give her a little something extra. Then why? Why bother? Why not just give you an average blowjob? Where's the incentive? If they go. If they go the extra mile. All right. More like the extra inch. <laughs> Is this all getting cut? I don't know. I don't even know if this should stay in. I really, I'm going to leave this in because I want somebody on the Reddit to give me a response. <laughs> somebody who's used a hooker and not afraid to admit it. I don't know. So when I end up using them in my midlife crisis, I know whether it's a tip or not, and I don't embarrass myself like I you're, did with this uh, fake ID guy. You're on your own when it comes to <laughs> tipping your hooker. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tip her. I'll stick my tip in her. Back to the Simpsons. Uh... Yeah, I like the line, uh, so then they all start looking at him, and Moe's like, yeah, I really want that buttocks. Can I have your buttocks? Yeah. I mean, if you die. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I like, like the that. idea. I like the line, quit, quit harvesting me with your eyes, as yeah. opposed to quit undressing me with your eyes. Yeah, I like, I like that, that line. I like the two. Uh, and so Homer now very much does not want to give up his kidney. He realizes what it, what it actually means. I like where he says to Marge, oh, I don't need to give Grandpa my kidney. We can give him that artificial kidney I invented. <laughs> it's just a, a beer can with a whistle glued to it. I love that both before and after love the Thomas that. Edison episode, he always seems to be building or inventing things. Like yes. that robot or yeah. oh, that's why yours doesn't work. Yeah. The spice rack. Uh, no, it just seems like Homer, Homer accidentally, because of the sake of all, a bunch of different individual jokes, Homer accidentally he seems to have this uh, uh, He likes to workman. be a handyman, yeah. but he's not. He's very unhandy. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of handymen. None of them have ever tried to build a kidney, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, they might. I don't know. You don't know. And They're also what time. reminded me of uh, the Itchy and Scratchy uh, land and other episodes was Marge uh, saying, what is it with you and robots? When, yeah. Homer, when Homer fights with the Wild West robots. Right. Uh, oh, that's true. I didn't yeah, even think of the Itchy and Scratchy land episode. This seems to be... Sp- at least that one, but I feel like there's other instances where Homer kind of pisses off an animatronic thing or a robot and right. they go after him. Yeah. I think it's more the Simpsons writer's uh, knack for like Asmanov type jokes, but uh, it's funny yeah. that I, 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 I like that line. What is it with you and robots? <laughs> so Homer uh, agrees to do it and he says, uh, Marge, I want you to do something for me. And she's like, anything, Homer. Uh, and in he case says, I die. <laughs> in case I die, burn down the hospital. <laughs> Blow up the hospital. Up the hospital. <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> and Marge goes, I, I said I'll do it. So and I, I guess will. I will. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. Like that's that's such that's a character rooted joke. And yes. Not only is it ridiculous, but it's character rooted for both of them. For both of them. Yeah. Homer Homer would want revenge on the hospital, and he <laughs> would want it in like a cinematic blow up the hospital type way. Yep. And Marge. Clearly thinks it's the wrong thing to do, but, but she but, made but a promise. But the loving wife, she would say, she, "I'll do anything yeah. you want," and then she would stick to her yeah, promise. I yeah. love it. And she was like not happy about it, but she no. was. I ha- you get the impression that if he had died, I Marge think Marge would actually would have blown up the hospital. She would have dressed yeah. up as a nurse. She would have visited Two Face first, <laughs> and then she would have walked out, hit the switch. It wouldn't have worked right away. She would shake it. She, would, what's going on? And yeah. then the, the, the hospital would explode, and she'd hop on a school bus and drive away. You want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> for my breast surgery. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She did have it. Uh, so then uh, Homer goes to the hospital. He films out. He fills out the standard form, which <laughs> protects them for all gross negligence. Yeah. Which you point out when we were watching it that you thought that was a really good sports welder. Yeah, type exactly. Line. Because that's an institutional thing. That is true. They basically right. make you sign all these forms, and they are just. It's in Co- there. Covering it's, their own butts. It, it, the, the sports, the, what makes it sports in is that he he brings it the subtext of the text. Yeah. Uh, they say it out loud. Yeah. But it's there. It's something yeah. everybody deals with in everyday life. Right. And then, uh, so the operation's about to go down. Dr. Oh. Herbert turns his back. Oh, yeah. yeah. They cut to the hospital. They cut to an exterior of the hospital. Um, and you hear that riff that I might have started with Dog of Death, but it, they've definitely used it in hospital scenes before. And it's a uh, do 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 do. So that is actually a uh, 
It's apparently a reference to the theme music from Ben Casey, an American medical series from the 1960s. Okay, that makes sense. It's, it to me, it I never sounds knew that. like... I've never the, even heard of that To show. me, it sounds like the stereotypical TV sound of any show in the right. 70s and 80s. Yeah. Uh, cut to the exterior shot, you know, and it's very dramatic. It, like you said, the Simpsons have used that as like the dramatic yeah, hospital yeah. music going on a number of years. So. Yeah. The reason I want to bring it up is, I mean, we're not really a trivia show. If we were, we'd probably have a lot more to talk about with each episode. Right. But in terms of us being a post-classic Simpsons podcast, um, do they, I feel like they don't do that as much anymore. We've talked about how they don't well, have the, about the this, exterior the scene sound setting effects. Music, yeah. Uh, and I don't know if we've do that when they certainly must have hospital scenes. I don't know if they would bother doing I, the do, do, do. I don't remember doo, hearing doo, doo, this, that little musical sting for a while. in any episode that we've watched right. for this show. You would think we would have brought it up then. Yeah. All right, that's just so interesting. So. Interesting to know that, just... like, well, how is the show different? People want to know. That's village, a subtle... village, village Voice wanted to know. They came and asked us. That's true. Uh, how is the show different? That's one of them. That's where... one subtle way it's yeah, different. One sub subtext way. Sub subtext. Uh, so they're in the operating room. They're in the OR, also known as the operating room, which I already said. <laughs> oh, and... are they? That's pretty <laughs> it good. Doesn't quite work, but <laughs> sort of. It sort of work. <laughs> that's Rushmore, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Dr. Hibbert's scrubbing in. Uh, one second, Homer's there. He turns his back, and when he turns back around, Homer is gone. I love that there's an open window with, like, drapes, like, as if <laughs> it was in a kitchen. The wind's blowing it, yeah. The wind's blowing it. They're on the ground floor. It's just a field outside, and Homer has run out the window. It's, uh, is it directly recalling, or is it just more of a trope? Or is it directly recalling uh, One Flew Over Cuckoo's Nest? It's probably... That's a good question. It might be a reference to it. Yeah, the, the the open field especially. Yeah, um, exactly. Which I don't even remember if that's in One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. All I know it is it's in like the it Cuckoo's Nest parody in the Michael Jackson episode. Yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah. I, It's really all kind of smushing together. It all together mixes together up yeah. in the brains. It's yeah. very hard to separate real life or real pop culture items from the Simpsonized version of them. Yes, it is. It can be. <laughs> um, so yeah, Homer runs out and leaves Grandpa to die. And that's the end of, that's the act break there. Uh, I think that's a big part of why this episode was so heavily requested, <laughs> because people really hate that Homer would leave Grandpa to die, even though he's the one who put him there in the first place. Yeah, clearly I'm not as enamored with this episode as you are, and I have uh, some fundamental problems with it, but yeah. I will say in its credit, uh, the fact that Homer leaves his father to die... That's something I feel like I could I could see us saying that with a new episode plot where we say, oh, Bart marries a pregnant woman or some, something ridiculous. Homer right. leaving his father to die is one of those ridiculous things. I wish they would have done more with it, but I don't think they failed the story completely where I'm like, this is ridiculous. It, it, the way they had well, set it up and the way they follow through, it makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like Bart marrying a pregnant girl. <laughs> None of that makes any sense. Yeah. It's all completely crazy. Yeah, I wish this episode would have done a better job, but compared to a lot of the ridiculous plots we've covered yeah. on this show, I think... We at least understand. Yeah, I don't have that fundamental knee-jerk, like, oh my god, I can't believe he left his father right. to die. Right, we it's understand. Like, Homer's yeah. scared. Homer's yeah. Homer. Like, he's yeah, a, that, he's made, a dumb that dumb. beat made sense following yeah. the previous beats. Yep. Uh, so the beginning of Act 3, we start off, uh, not only had Homer run away through this open field, but he's on the railroad with like a little push cart. Yeah, he goes down and it's just like a very stereo, car- you know, you talk about how cartoony it was that Grandpa's kidneys explode. It's right. cartoony that Homer's escape would involve the very... Uh, That's very John Swartzwell. Very, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, and like he, Looney Tunes. He always and, loved like the hobo bindles yeah, and things. Yeah. Like that was always him in the writer's room. I, I so. bet you, and I'm saying Looney Tunes because they always liked those things too. And I yeah. bet you Swartzwell just grew up with those cartoons Probably. and that had a huge influence sure. on him. I'm sure. But then when Homer's driving the uh, the hand car on the street and he like parallel parks it and it's tough. I, that I didn't, didn't mind really do it. I didn't me. mind it. I was thinking why bother? Like why like, is he doing this? It but was, it was fine. It was a funny visual to, to parallel park a Kalamazoo. Yeah, right. <laughs> but like I guess it just took too much time and what the payoff wasn't as good as the, right, the time right, right, it took right. to set it up it was i don't know it's always funny to see things get wrecked on the simpsons right and him wrecking the asphalt the pavement road, yeah, to, yeah, with yeah. the thing that i got a, a yeah. mild kick out of that i got a mild kick is a good way of saying. <laughs> that's when we come to this whole sea thing like homer winds yes. up at the harbor uh and all of this I guess it makes sense, like if you've become a pariah yeah. because you've done something. The so idea heinous, of escaping to the sea, where it sort of makes sense, it's, right? It's I the mean, closest you have to basically leaving civilized society. I, you know. Yeah, I mean, it shows that Homer didn't really put much thought into this because yeah. he's basically giving up his entire life just because he didn't want to give up right, a kidney. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, if you think if you start thinking about it in grounded character terms, he's fine with leaving Marge. He's fine with leaving yeah, his kids. He's leaving his entire life. I feel like you stay. You start to you probe too deep into this episode, and it really falls apart. 
Right, which I think is part of the problem with the episode. Yeah. I mean, that's why, why this episode has a reputation, I think. Um, apparently, this whole Ship of Lost Souls bit was something yeah. that George Meyer came up with. This is coming from the Wikipedia, which probably got it from the commentary of this episode. Right. Uh, it's a bit that he had pitched, and they kind of worked it into this episode. Huh. And it was actually the last thing animated for this episode, because my, the, oh. there could have been another end to this episode, I guess. Like, another way it went. Right. I'd be really curious to know what it was. Yeah, like, was did he also include the... Because there's really... It's all one long setup for one joke in that, hey, we, uh, we've we done awful things, but your thing's but really, really awful. bad. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. I wonder if Meyer's idea was that or just the general Lost Souls premise. I, f- I feel like the Harbor stuff at least had to have been in there. Maybe it was just Homer going onto that ship and all the weirdos, okay. but... Yeah, I don't know. I, Interesting. Like, where do, where do you go? Where do you take this episode once Homer flees the hospital? Like, right, what right, right. what would the third act be if not going to? If, if anything, this? it gets ha- kind of has that vibe of like those novels you would read or maybe still do read. Those like where the like the drifter who just doesn't know where to go in life and. Uh, not right. necessarily like uh, Kerouac or anything, but I feel like I've read a lot of books, especially growing up. So maybe they were more young adult. Uh, maybe not. I don't remember. But a lot of books where there's just like kind of this aimless wandering and you well, don't know it, where you're going. I and, mean, I don't remember exactly Moby Dick, but was Ishmael like... Ishmael. 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 It's Ishmael. <laughs> Ishmael. <laughs> don't you dare say Ishmael. It, it might it's even... Ish- it, it's probably correct. But because it's three syllables, Ishmael. It's, but it's so pretentious. It's Ishmael. It's it's just. Ish- it's not Ish. It's not M A L E. He's not like Shemail, but just <laughs> moving the letters might around. Be. Oh, all right. Well, that's fine too. That's why it starts with "Call me Ishmael." He's like asserting his gender. Right. He's, he's okay. <laughs> that makes that's sense. That's why it's called Moby Dick. Is he saying Mo B Dick? Dick? Yeah. He's like, give me Mo B Dick. By the way, that new Moby Dick movie. What is that? Is that I, like, it, it is an adaptation of Moby Dick? No, it's, it's like an adaptation of the story that inspired Moby Dick. Why did Dick? they do that? Why would you do that? Because that's not real, right? It's Melville just wrote a book. He didn't... No, I think, not... I, well, I think there was an actual story that was like an inspiration for Moby yeah, Dick. Yeah, I'm sure there was like some guy somewhere who wanted to catch a whale. But, right, but why not just make Moby Dick? Yeah, I don't... Like, I hate, like it's not a rights yeah. thing. It's clearly in the public domain. Yeah, it I, came I, out 150 there's, there's years ago. There's a lot of stories where they're like, like, the story was fake, but the author was really there. You know, like they want to make Edgar Allan Poe the action star. Or, right. Right. Like, what, what are you doing? What I, is that? No, I have what no idea. That? I don't know. I don't get it. What are you doing? Like, let's not take this critically acclaimed <laughs> novel and make it a thing. Let's take this stupid story that yeah, inspired I, I the don't, novel. I don't, like, the movie actually looks interesting, but if it just, but it also looks too stupid for What's me to take called? serious. At the heart of the sea? I don't know. Just call, just call him Moby Dick. Just call him Moby Dick. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. Just call him Moby Dick. It's just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Guys. I mean, Frankenstein does it too, but that's actually from the novel where he, they, the, the novel has those bookends, so it makes more sense. But um, yeah, I, I, there's there's other yeah there's other lit stories where it's just like we I don't yeah I don't know uh, did you see Dance and Pete was that at the harbor yeah I noticed that that noticed was cool that. nice little callback to uh, an episode like three seasons earlier um, yeah so Homer I I love the uh, the taffy shops speaking speaking of Ishmael. Yeah, yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, the name of the taffy shop is uh, is uh, Call Me Delish Meal. <laughs> Delish my L. Call me delish mail. No, a meal. Like because it's a meal. You eat. You're eating the well, taffy. It wasn't spelled that way. It was. It wasn't meal. No, call me delish meal is too too far removed. So it's but it's, it's call me delish mail. Oh, I thought it was a call me delish meal because you're having a meal of taffy that's delicious. <laughs> I'm gonna double check. Yeah, call me delish mail. Oh, all right. Well, or delish me ail. <laughs> my, mine makes more sense because it's a meal of taffy. Well, that's not what it was. Anyway, that that was a funny idea. You know, easy joke to make, but yeah, he thinks it's a ship, but it's actually a taffy it's shop. It's actually a taffy it's shop. It's like yeah. a random enough classic Simpsons joke. Like, like, why a taffy shop? Why not? You know, they could have well, said makes souvenir sense. shop. It's saltwater taffy. It's yeah, no, it, but it's just it's silly. Uh, but it really sets up a great joke where when he does jump onto a sea captain's ship. Yep. Sea captain goes, uh, what, what other ships have you worked on? And over his points, he goes, uh, that one. The I've been to the Taffy Shop. Shop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just, that's a great line. Yeah, I love that. Then we, we cut to uh, a quick scene with Grandpa back at the hospital where Krusty comes in as part of the <laughs> Last Laugh program. <laughs> last I thought, Laugh. I thought that was really funny, just the idea of a Last Laugh program and a great, Grandpa's a great reaction. There's a scene between you. Very rare. I'm trying to think of other Krusty Grandpa scenes. Yeah. Might be the only one-on-one I ever. I don't know. Yeah. This was actually a 
a pretty Dan Castellaneta heavy episode. Yeah, it's pre- if you watch that scene, it's kind of amazing to picture him, him, him doing, especially since he can switch uh, very easily during the well, table reads. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know how they record it. If he does like all of one characters first, or if he actually does a conversation. Oh, that's a good point. From what I understand, I think they just do it as it's I wouldn't written. be surprised if it's a conversation. Um, and I think they can all do it, especially the three main guys. Yeah. Um, but Dan Castellaneta is especially, I, th- I think, has been renowned for being able to just switch back and forth without a beat. Like, you yeah. can just go in and out of the voices. Okay. I think it's Aria Ken, too. Probably That's why they Harry get the Shearer. big bucks, Jack. Um, That's why we get the OK bucks. <laughs> thank, thank you, jock.com, jock.com, for our OK slash only bucks. <laughs> I mean, at the end, thanks to our Amazon. Well, our Amazon. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but I love, you know, Krusty looks at, 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 at Grandpa's chart and he's like, oh, you don't have a lot long, you know, I'll cut to the, the end and he like sings a little song. And then when he leaves, I just love that Grandpa goes, come back, doctor. <laughs> yeah. uh, he just he thinks had, he's a real doctor No, the whole no time. idea what was going yeah, and, on. Yeah, and Krusty was pretty spot on. He wasn't jerk-ass Krusty, which mm-hmm. is, seems to be the worst of the jerk-asses in the post-classic era. Uh, he, uh, he, he really didn't give a shit. He was just trying to do his job, but uh, he wasn't mean-spirited. He, uh, he's like, yeah. oh boy, it uh, looks like... Like, uh, you know, you're more short on time than I am. and Right, uh, exactly. And he still tries. He sings that very beautiful, you are so beautiful. Tell, Tell me! Hey! Which is almost the same me, I can't remember the episode it's from, that the scream does. Mun- Munch's scream. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! Museums don't have foosball, do they? Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> reminded me of the very... I think exa- it's the same season, actually. I think it's yeah. uh, Make Room for Lisa, or it's, Lost Art Lisa. It just reminded me of Dave, D- Dan Castellaneta's, May! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, no, that was a nice little scene. Again, none of the jokes really made me laugh, but like it was, it was C plus. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the ship of lost souls, aka Honey Bunch, yeah. which is so, the actual name of the ship. Besides being George Meyer's idea, I get that the characters themselves are stereotypes of, of or tropes of of movies right. we've seen before. Like one was film noir, right? Type one was people. outright Peter Lorre, right? Uh, which is a very easy character to to do. Yes, it <laughs> is, Jack. I'm here in studio. <laughs> Stimpy? Ren? No, Ren, right? Ren. <laughs> you idiot! <laughs> you idiot! Um, yeah, so Peter Laurie was obvious. I, the other ones, I'm guessing, were more, maybe maybe they're specific and they're going over my head, but you have, like, the, the British uh, soldier who also, like, hunts big game. Right. You have uh, the, the French guy with the accordion. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the woman in, like, the, 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 the wedding bi- dress. Yeah. dress. Yeah. Uh, so they, uh, they, they seem to be more tropes than in any specific reference. Yeah. But is the idea of them all being on some mysterious boat, is that... Like what is that? Is that a, is that well, also a trope? It felt like a trope. I but feel I, like like P- the Peter Lorre character, even though he talks about how his disgrace is like a thing at a, a car wash, yeah, which, which was, was really very funny, funny because yeah. it subverts the, uh, the the setup. Yeah, yeah, you think it's something serious that it's just he yeah, wasn't allowed to car wash anymore. Something classy, for lack of a better word. You right, know, Peter Lorre, you don't picture it a car wash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it seemed like he was specifically a reference to Peter Lorre in Casablanca. By the way, by the way, it's Peter Lorre. Peter Lorre. <laughs> In Casablanca. <laughs> you know, it seems like it's a reference to his character in Casablanca, and in that movie, like, everyone at Casablanca was, like, a misfit, kind of, right, hiding right, right. out. Crossroads. Like, and... It seems like this is just a bunch of characters at, at a crossroads. Yeah, it reminded me of, of a it. Twilight Zone episode. I feel like there's a lot of those where a bunch of random people come together at a bus station or a diner or something. Right. I was just trying to think if there was a, literally a movie or something I don't that they think were it's referencing a specific reference. where there was a ship full of random types. But listeners, if, there's, if you do think it's a... Sp- yeah. If you do think it's a specific reference, yeah. let us know. It's interesting because it's 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 you know Simpsons is uh, written by people who grew up with pop culture, uh, and it's very much informed by that. And uh, it's so that this scene really wouldn't exist without watching decades of, of TV and bringing all these elements right. together. Sure. So it's very broad, but at the same time, it really feels like a specific reference we're just not getting. And I don't think it yeah. is, no, but it's I think weird that it feels like it is. That's the sign of a good. Kind of homage, I guess. I guess so. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, like it feels like it's referencing something we don't know. But exactly. As far as far as we know, it's not. If but anything, maybe it's we're just wrong. referencing that broad swath of decades of pop culture that's yeah. kind of just worked our way into us. That the same way it worked our way into the people who wrote it. Exactly. It's it's very it's it's just a weird feeling that it feels like I've seen it and it's specific, but it's probably not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just yeah. The idea of a ship of lost soul. It just seems like I've seen it. I like uh, the British guy in the the British army khaki yeah, uniform yeah. I like that he says wait till we get to my story it has tigers yeah. we never see his story and then later on <laughs> we're just a lot of you know misfits thieves and tiger stabbers <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just like that we never get the story but exactly. we, we there, can figure there's it out there's a continuity there yeah it's, uh, it's sub sub subtext it's, it's, yes it is no it's subtext but but it's, it's, it's funny like we didn't need to get the story to get the 
like a joke. Kind right, of right, right, right. Um, I also liked uh, the, her line where it's very classy and, and they're setting the mood. And it's mysterious. And she's like, I'll tell you my tale, a tale of heartbreak and, and, and lost souls. And, uh, and if anybody has to go to the bathroom, do it now. I don't want anybody walking around during my... I didn't love it, that. Because it breaks the, the mood. Yeah, I guess. It's just like, I get, I get what they're doing, but I just didn't find it that funny. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, and then Homer tells him what he did. He didn't give his, uh, his kidney to his father, and then he ran away. And they all pick him up, and they throw him off the yeah. boat. I don't remember. I remember this being, and even in the introduction, you can tell, because I kept referring to this as the third act. Yeah. And it's really just this one scene, and it's all one big joke. They do this entire long, moody setup to set up the home, their reaction to Homer, saying, oh, God, yeah. that's much worse. I, th- I thought there was more there. I thought there was going to be a couple of no, scenes. No, I mean, or... it's, well, it's, the third act is the whole Homer. He doesn't learn anything the from them thing. specifically. It's no. really, it's, it's all in service for this one moment where they go, well, that's terrible. Well, he does learn that, oh, man, if even these misfits and these, this lost soul ship won't yeah. have me, then I can't go anywhere. I should just man yeah. up and go back. It seems like it's a lot of story for one uh, advancing beat. I, I agree with you. But I, I think on the whole, it works. Yeah. I mean, I do love when he falls in the water and he goes, that's the last time I trust the strangest people on earth. Yeah, right. Like, that's, just, that's a great line. Yeah, that's good. I like that he, he gets shipwrecked or he, gets, he washes up on the ocean. Yeah. Uh, and he sees a father and son building a ca- sandcastle and that's another thing. And he goes, okay, I've got to take the first step to getting my life back. <laughs> and the first step is him stepping on the sandcastle yeah. they were building. <laughs> And the kid's like, oh, that was really funny. 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 But it's interesting. Again, like it's there. I can't really fault this episode, especially compared to newer episodes. They, everything that they need is there. I just feel like it's the most minimal effort. It's just the bare minimum. So basically what gets him to change his mind, like, you know, we've seen a lot of episodes where like Lisa, Lisa goes Gaga or in the one where she meets her best friend, where she basically changes her mind out of nowhere because the story demanded it and they needed to wrap up the episode. I don't think that happened so here, So I don't though. think this happened here, but I still think it's the bare minimum. So basically, Homer, there's two things. Homer is just leaving. He's done. Nothing is pulling him back. The only thing that pulls him back are the one-two punch of everybody kicking him off the boat because his story is much worse. Right. Uh, and then seeing the father and the son bond. Yeah. Those two things. I think that's plenty. That's, you think that's enough? Yeah. I mean, he, he's also realizing how hard it is to, you know, what the hell is he going to do? The like, only thing that really justifies it for me is that when he does get back there, he still can't do it. He's, like, it, yeah. it was enough to get him back there, but still not enough to fully convince him. Really, nothing ever right. does nothing, fully convince nothing him. Nothing convinces him, yeah. yeah. Which, so, which it, it works for me. I, it's, I'm in a weird place with this episode because I can't really give you any good reason why it didn't work. It just felt weak. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely... Uh, I can't say... The, the episodes we've covered that I hate... Uh, even like last week's, I, I have a black and white answer. This didn't work because they didn't do this. Uh, right. This episode is better than those episodes. Definitely. It, it did everything it had to, but I get maybe it just didn't do more. Maybe it was bare minimum. I don't know. All right. Well, we'll, we'll talk through that at the end. I just got a couple of other quick yeah. things to bring up. Yeah, so let's just talk about uh, Homer gets back to the hospital. He goes in, but then he goes out. He, he's, he's not fully on board, and as we said, he never gets fully on board. And then, um, I don't even remember, does he go back into, he goes back into the ER, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, he, he runs he, away again. Yeah, he, he uh, well, he, he gets to the hospital, he's like, dun, 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 the, the heroic music plays, and he goes in, and then he, he runs away like a little girl. Right. He does it again, and then I really like this, the only way he can really get into the hospital for good is he has to just, like, run in screaming like a crazy person. Yes. And kind of just use the momentum of running in and, and not being able to turn, he's, like, turning his brain off and just running yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is almost something, like, I feel like that's what I do. Like, if there's something I really just don't want to do yeah you know like that's why when you come in and you see me doing the dishes i'm just like ah, ah, i'm just scrubbing the dishes <laughs> that's how you come in every time i come to Wii studios no it's like if you're cliff diving or something yeah you, you, you just do gotta, a running you just, start you because gotta, otherwise you're yeah. not just gonna jump you're forcing but... yourself to be unable to turn back yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so they go back to the operating room and the same exact thing happens where dr hibbert turns his back homer runs out the very same window hibbert's <laughs> like I, we should really close that window uh, which is I don't line. think he does reference of the window the second time. I think he only he? references it the oh, first maybe time. Maybe he said it the first time. I was okay. waiting for it, and I was like, oh, that's weird. And you think that line should have been in the second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. All right. I'm misremembering. Um, I might be. But Homer runs out, and he runs into the middle of the road. I'm curious to know what you thought of this moment. Uh, there is a, uh, a semi-truck carrying cars. A truck truck. A truck, a truck truck? Is that what they call oh, it? No. It's a <laughs> reference to a later Simpsons episode. Oh, okay. Uh, it's uh, driven by Hans Moleman. It's carrying a bunch of cars, and he breaks short of Ho- stops short right in front of Homer. The 
truck doesn't hit him, but then the car on top. Well, there's falls. a beat of safety. Like the, the truck just stops short, and right. the Hummer goes. Him. Right, and then the top car falls just fall, right suddenly off falls right off. Yeah, and lands right did on you, top. Did you like that? I really liked it. Yes. Really? Yeah. I think it's it's fine. It's really over the top. It's the but typical. It was like your episode. standard bait and switch. It's like, oh, whew, I'm safe. And then the car yeah. flies off. It was executed well enough for me to appreciate it. I liked yeah, it. It would have been better than him just getting hit by the truck. Right. I, I agree. That would have been the worst. But and I like that yeah. the car just violently crushes him. It vertically lands on him. Yeah. I think, well, I was thinking maybe he's in the intersection and one car stops, but then the other lane of traffic yeah, hits him. Yeah, that could happen. Yeah. But, uh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. But then anyway, it ends. Homer is in traction after this car accident, and uh, they're like, oh, I bet Grandpa's dead. And they're like, well, not actually. Yeah, and then yeah. we see that uh, they took Homer's kidney while he was under yeah. operations. Grandpa's alive and well. Yeah, Homer's pissed off about it. Homer's pissed. I, mean, I, would, I guess like he was, he was pissed because he really didn't want to lose the kidney because it weakens him. Right. But you would think he'd be almost relieved. He's like, hey, I get to be the hero. Again, like I... I was probably yeah, saying true. in the deleted scenes, yeah. uh, but uh, how I would say like I I would want to be blacked out and for and then the, for the thing to happen, right? right. You think he that's exactly what he got? He didn't have to worry about getting the kidney taken out. He didn't have to worry about forcing his way into the hospital. I guess. He well, he kid- wasn't worried about the surgery. He was right. worried about the after effects. Yeah, know, but yeah. what I loved was he comes around and he says, "I've got everything I need right here," and he gives the family a big hug yeah, and yeah. he's pinching Bart's kidney, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Dad, you're tickling me." Yes. Tickly. Yeah, and then Bart slowly realizes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I and love then that. it ends. Yeah. I love that. That's a great ending. Makes sense. Yeah. My story of jilted love is long and bittersweet. If anyone has to go to the bathroom, go now. I don't want you walking around during my story. My story's better. It has tigers. So that is it for this episode, Homer Simpson and Kidney Trouble. It is time to rank this episode, and we're going to do that on our four-factor analysis here. We're looking at the humor, the integrity, the production, and the originality of the episode, the hippo scale as we've come to know it and love it. Let's put two minutes on the clock. Beep, boop, beep. And we're doing zero out of five. Each of these topics, Jack, the humor of this episode, what do you got? Uh, 3.5 might be too high. I might even go three, but I'll say 3.5. 3.5 is really dead like, on where I, I like was going to say. I the lewd, lewd joke. I liked uh, Marge's blowing up the hospital. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of great jokes in this. I think the third act is probably the least funny of all of them. But uh, mm. yeah, I think overall I this is a pretty I feel good like, I feel like I might be going high. I don't know. Uh, the integrity of this episode. This might be an interesting one. Yeah, um, I mean, we said it was borderline jerk-ass, but not quite. Uh, I don't think Homer is a problem here. I, that might surprise a lot of people because of the whole, like, leaving, leaving his, father, his to father to die. But the way that it happens, and, it, you know, it's not... Homer doesn't say, like, ah, I, don't, I want to kill my dad. It's just he's looking out for himself, which is yeah. something that I think Homer would do. Yeah, I mean, there are some pluses in, like, like Homer... Homer asking Marge to blow up the hospital and Marge agreeing to it. Those are both rooted in character. Yeah. Uh, so I, I won't go terribly low, but I still, I don't know. I feel like Homer was not acting the way he should have. The, the, being afraid of the, the, being too afraid for the surgery, stuff like that, that's very re- relatable. That's right. fine. Um, I guess I just don't know. I really can't get past why he would let his, why wouldn't he just pull over like Grandpa P on the side of the road? For, well, then we don't have an episode. I but. know, I know. Uh, I, I'm, so, I'm going to go above average and probably say a three. Really? This. Yeah. All right. I'm thinking two, but I'm worried that might be too high. I'm wavering between really? a 1.5 and a two. Okay. Uh, production of this episode. Um, There's some nice looking things. I, I thought Bloodbath Gulch was well animated. Uh, the yeah, Ship of Lost Souls, that yeah, whole thing was, was nice. There's nothing amazing about the it. The Taffy Shop. Yeah. There's nothing amazing, but I'm saying above average as opposed to below average. Yeah. 2.5. Okay. You're going exactly average. I'm going to say a three. And finally, the originality of this episode. Um, what do you think? I'm thinking... I like a lot of this episode. I really don't think this is a bad episode. It's kind of... I would say it's on the better side of season 10. Uh, this idea of Grandpa needing help and Homer agreeing and then not knowing what he got into and then kind of running away. I, I'm into that. I think it's a good concept for a story. It could have been done a little bit better in spots. Um... I'm probably going to say a three. Yeah, I, li- I love the idea of Homer having a donated kidney. It's a good Homer does a thing. Classic uh, idea for a Simpsons episode. Very fundamental. Homer does a thing. Um, I, they really blew it, I think, with the Homer-Grandpa dynamic. I feel like that should have been a much bigger part of the story. But I'm, maybe I'm thinking I'll just take more points off for integrity uh, and not take it away for originality in that case. Because structurally, I liked it. I liked the third act. I liked the Lost Souls. I wish they did more with it. 
Um, I like the idea of him running away and just becoming an outcast to society. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just it felt like it all needed a little bit more on uh, th- spread throughout. Like it was just evenly distributed in its underwhelmingness. <laughs> um, but, but you talking, you talking just now made me raise mine to three point five on, <laughs> on the originality. So yeah, right. I realize you're probably gonna go low, but yeah, I, I'm just gonna say two point five. Okay. Okay, so we have crunched our numbers, and Homer Simpson in Kidney Trouble has ranked as a slightly better episode than The Book Job, and a slightly worse episode than Worst Episode Ever. That puts it at number 48 on our current list. Nice, I like that. It's, it's slightly worse than the worst it's episode slightly ever. worse than the worst episode ever, which is surprisingly high on our list. So, Where I'm me? <laughs> worst Episode Ever thinks that Worst Episode Ever is not the worst episode ever. <laughs> What's so hard about that? <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for joining us on our 60 epic victory or whatever the hell we said it was. Uh, 60 episodes deep. Mr. Uh... <laughs> yep. We'll be back in 30 days. <laughs> Unless you can get us to say kill tip season. Uh, oh, no, I'm being sent back to <laughs> That's our obscure Superman corner. It's not that obscure. They're nerds listening to this. <laughs> And if you guys have a Simpsons episode that you would like to suggest that we watch, you can do that on our website. It's weepodcast.com. That's W-E-E podcast.com. From there, you can also get to our Reddit, our Facebook page, our Twitter, all of our fun social media accounts. And you can get those Amazon links. Guys, we need you to click through those Amazon links. It really yeah, helps out a lot. If you're doing some, some Christmas shopping, yep. you, you missed Black Friday, but that's okay. Uh, you'll probably still put it off until December 23rd. I, I certainly will. And that's okay. But yeah. whenever you do it, uh, just, just click through that way. And we're, we're a little fuzzy on the logic. I think what we've, we've come around to is if you add it to your cart while you're through Amazon. I think so. Some people, are like, some people come up to me and say, oh, I, add, I already had a bunch of stuff in my cart, but I didn't do it. But is it okay if I go to your web, go to your link and then just click purchase? Does that yeah. work? And it's no, I, I, think it, I think you have to add it to the cart, but yeah. I'm not positive. I mean, try to use Guys, this every step of the way. Just clear your cart. Click through, <laughs> add it to your cart, and check out. That'll guys, definitely guys, work. Guys, 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 just sell everything you own. Guys, just rebuy buy it. it on Amazon through Wii. Consume. <laughs> what is wrong with you fools? Uh, and if you're in the Brooklyn area, uh, woo Classic Simpsons trivia is tonight. If you're listening to the day it came out, if you're listening to any other day, you missed it. But it comes back around. It's the first Thursday of every month. I co-host that with friend of the show Dan Ozzy, uh, and that's at Berry Park in Brooklyn. There are other fine woohoo classic Simpsons trivias across North America, so Google around and you can find more information out about that. Uh, and we just also want to say that our Sync Points series, we Ooh. did the Simpsons movie commentary recently. If you haven't gotten that, you can get that through our website. Uh, that's $2 for the Simpsons movie commentary. That was such a big hit, we're going to do another one. There are no other Simpsons movies. <laughs> Thank God. Yet. Uh, so we're so going to be doing do some a, for Christmas, something different. Right? Uh, we're doing some a little for the holiday little, season, a little Christmas movie. Uh, we are going to watch Home Alone Two: Lost in New York, and we are going to be doing a live commentary of that. That's going to come out. I want to say December fifteenth. Yes, I think probably. so. Probably so, so. Uh, in a week and a half or so. Yes, so get ready. So look, if that's look something that interests you guys, you can check you know, it out. Maybe you got some time off uh, late December and yeah. you're looking for something to watch. Uh, I think it's on HBO it's Go. It's streaming on HBO Go, HBO Now. It's probably on HBO a lot. <laughs> maybe it's on right this second. You, you can catch you it. You might have it memorized like we do. Yeah, I'm pretty. Cool I know it pretty well. Jay. Oh, you're cooking. <laughs> if you'd like to hear more of this, you can listen to that Sync Points episode. Boy, kids, from home early. That's actually for the commercial. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll probably talk about, talk that. about that on the on the actual commentary. We'll so check that, that out. That's coming soon. Uh, we want to thank Jock.com once again for yeah, sponsoring thank this you very episode. Much. JOQ.com. Use that promo code WeCruise. You get a lot of cool, fun stuff. Uh, and you're supporting a listener of this show, yeah. which is great. And um, personally, on Twitter, I'm at then Dan says. I'm at Jackie No Breaks, and uh, check out my uh, Use It in a Sentence Facebook page. It's uh, I've been remembering to post it up uh, lately, so there's Good. actually been a lot of new posts, uh, pretty much uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, so uh, check that out. My old spelling homework. If that doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. It's pretty exciting, guys. Uh, okay, so we did 60 episodes. Yeah, yeah. Let's do 60 more, <sighs> starting with 61. Coming back next week, we are going to be watching season 15's Today I Am a Clown. Oh, I bet you it's about Barney. Probably about Mo. <laughs> uh, so season 15's Today I Am a Clown, that's what we're going to be watching next week. Uh, so we'll listen to that. That should be fun. Uh, that's it for this episode. So my name is Dan. My name is Jack. And we're going to cut, cut all, all this. of this. Especially that stuff about Lost. <laughs> Was a gunfight. <laughs> oh, there, 
there's old Curly. He played the town preacher until we laid him off, but he still hangs around. Oh, help me, please, I'm sick. <laughs> but it's funny, Marge. The guy's sick. Uh, shouldn't we help him? He knows what he's doing. 